Hi, my name is Jake or Jay Wan Sim, and I will be doing my research presentation on capitalism and Han as represented in the film Parasite by Bong Joon-ho. Yeah, so the question that guides my research here is how are the effects of Han from modernization, capitalism, and Western cultural imperialism reflected in the movie Parasite? And a sub question is how does this play out in the context of historical colonization in the 20th century and the nouveau rich of recent decades in South Korea? So uh, before I dive into it, is a brief overview of what I'll be looking at. Uh, some of the motifs are uh, smell, the scholar's rock, stairs and height, the rainstorm that comes in the uh, tragic part of the movie, Native American costumes, themes, and crossing the line um, in comparison of homes. Uh, some of the themes that come up through this are character building, social stratification, and capitalism. So first, the scholar's rock is an element that comes up throughout the movie. Um, it's gifted to the Kim family and ki by um, his friend Min, um, whose grandpa, a Confucian scholar uh, of a wealthier background, gifted to them. Um, he told them, this stone here is said to bring material wealth to families. It represents sort of uh, the Kim family's aspiration for wealth and um, their struggle in trying to rise in social uh, class. Here, uh, Kiwu is seen clutching and holding on to this rock as his hope for rising um, in, 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 in finishing their scheme um, to infiltrate the Park family and have uh, better jobs and rise out of their home with, without Wi-Fi. But in the end, this rock itself was what brought their demise and, and ended their scheme and brought his near-death experience. Uh, the stairs and height are another important element and motif throughout this movie that comes up. It represents class and social standing in society. Mrs. Park here is seen climbing the stairs in her fancy home. Um, they live closest to the sky up in the hills with plenty of sunlight. Um, she has her one of her three dogs with her. They're going up into the, the bedrooms where they live and they are of the higher class. The Kim family is seen here um, during the rainstorm after a tragic event, going down back to where they live after having infiltrated the Park family home and now having to return to their semi-basement, which is getting flooded by the rainstorm. After a lot of tragic events, in the end, Mr. Kim is forced to go into hiding in the basement at the bottom of many flights of stairs here. One of the other important things to point out here in the movie are the existence of semi-basements as a place of residence. Uh, it's, it's a real way of living in South Korea and it's a remnant of imperialism through the Cold War and it was built as bunkers during the Korean War in case of attack. Um, yeah, and it's not the greatest way to live uh, by people's feet here where they're at risk of drunk people even peeing um, by their window. And unfortunately, it's just uh, with the difficulty in, in housing prices and, and lack of jobs where a, a lot of people are forced to live. The rainstorm was another significant event and um, water rise is an important motif throughout this movie. It, it demonstrates the difference, a uh, vast difference between classes and in this society. Whereas uh, as the water is flowing down, we can see that it's going from the, the hills where it, it doesn't affect them down to the people who live at the lower um, altitude or elevation, such as the Kim family's home in the semi-basement where the toilet is seen flooding and, and spewing sewage. Um, throughout their home. Many families who live down there are forced to escape with destroyed homes and live um, in the refuge uh, in, in this place together while Mrs. Park here is talking about how great the rainstorm was and clearing the skies and you see that Mr. Kim is not happy about that. Smell is another important motif that came up throughout the movie. Uh, the son of the Park family says, yes, they, they smell the same. Um, what is that? Um, and it almost gives away their scheme, uh, showing that they all come from a similar place. We can see that it uh, represents the disdain of the working class by the wealthy, and it represents sort of the, the smell of poverty. Uh, even though Mr. Kim has done everything right and he's a 
great driver. You can see that Mr. Park still says that although he never crosses the line and never does anything wrong, the smell crosses the line. And in talking to his wife, he says, it's hard to explain. I smell it sometimes when I ride the subway. And to which his wife responds that she doesn't take the subway. So she wouldn't know that smell. And here she is saying that the rain that flooded all these homes was such a blessing while holding her nose and saying that she doesn't like the smell of, of them. Um, the Native American aesthetic is something that came up a lot as well. It represents the nouveau rich racism of South Korea in, in, in sort of a, in the assimilating to uh, the imperialist power of the, the white American culture and society that they like the white Americans can, can feel superior to other cultures. The sun is, um, sort of obsessed with Native American, what they call Indian um, things. Here they, they show the tent and, and the family, the parents of the, the Park family are saying, well, the tent is from America, so it must be waterproof, it must be great. They say, don't worry, right? Um, the family here um, is shown, he's, he's telling Mr. Kim, despite how much it is embarrassing for him that is part of his job so he needs to do it and they'll be playing as indians so the sun can come and um fight them in a battle and, and defeat them and kill them and um his cultural appropriation is shown in that they show very little respect for native american culture and lives and where they can just be used as as playthings and, and to be to be killed in battle um while they uh, assimilate with uh, Americans who are the settler colonialists. Another motif that came up is a line. Uh, Mr. Park talks repeatedly about crossing the line. It's sort of an enforcement of social stratification. And while seen as uh, nonviolent, it, it in the end is the violent control of neoliberal capitalism that's enforced upon the working class. Here, we can see that the previous housekeeper sort of crosses this visual line and, and claps to wake up um, Mrs. Park, who is just falling asleep when she was supposed to be having the interview. And um, Mr. Park saying he can't stand people who cross the line and where uh, he shows how, how much he feels he's superior and wants to be treated in such a way. The uh, difference in homes is, is also a very um, important thing that we can uh, see in this movie. The Park family lives in a Western style modernist home uh, that is very excessive with space and, and land with all these giant windows and um, the, the, like the line, they have uh, huge walls around it where they have their own privacy, and just their own space with all these trees. Um, this is a, a Western style architecture. Um, while the Kims live in a very characteristically Korean semi-basement, which is a result of the Korean War, which becomes flooded because it is a semi-basement. Whereas um, the previous housekeeper, Moon Gwang and her husband um, are living in a full-on wartime styled underground basement bunker um, with no windows and no sunlight. Um, with poor living conditions. Some of the themes that come up through this movie are social stratification, where we can see that people of different classes are treated very differently, um, even just down to the food that they eat, where um, Moon Gwang's husband is drinking milk, almost like a baby, and um, is all that they can get for him to survive with things like canned food and a banana and the most simple of foods. While as a Park family, they can get anything and everything they like. Here we can see even with jobs, uh, Mr. Park is the CEO of a huge uh, tech, tech company and um, Mr. Kim is nothing but their servants. Um, at the same time, he talks about how grateful and how lucky they are to have those positions because um, relating to education, 500 college graduates would apply to opening for a guard position in, in a home like that. And because they, no one in the Kim family has college education, they would not be able to attain such a job such as that, except without conning, the only job they could get is being way underpaid, folding boxes while being fumigated in their semi-basement. And, and the manager is still yelling at them and deducts their pay saying that she doesn't like their work. 
while they're already being paid uh, far less than any living condition wage. Um, character building is something that's also very interesting to point out here. Family is a core social unit of Confucian society. And we can see uh, a comparison between the Park family, the Kims, and the unnamed family of Mungguang. Here she's shown on her knees, begging and pleading, offering money to um, for the survival of her husband. Well, um, the Kims here are living together in, in close cramped spaces with just the cheapest of foods and snacks for sustenance while the Park family has anything and everything they could ever want here. But something that's interesting to point out is that through this movie, no one is really portrayed as evil or um, worthy of uh, despise or hate. So who is the villain of, of these families? There's so much violence and conflict. And, and as the, the title of the movie um, implies, who are the parasites? Some would say that it's this family who is living off of the house and, and food of the Park family. And it might be the Kims who con their way in, but one possible analysis could be that it is the wealthy here who underpay the workers and, and treat them poorly to um, exploit them and have all of these um, excess um, that they live with. So we can see that, uh, in my opinion, capitalism is the villain here that brought on this conflict and violence. Neoliberal capitalism can be described as the free market where corporations rule society and, and living conditions that people have. It was brought on to South Korea and enforced by the US through military presence and economic support and fighting against communism in North Korea, uh, as exemplified by the KCIA and their violence and the um, violent capitalist dictatorships of the 50s to the 90s. Cultural hegemony is shown where the US and Western culture and, and um, items are seen as superior. And we can see class conflict um, is Marxism where um, revolution and revolt is uh, an inevitable response to capitalism and the struggle between the haves and the have nots. And something that puts everything together well is a quote by Frederick Jameson and that it is easier to imagine the end of the world than it is to imagine the end of capitalism. And here is my work cited. Thank you.